My name is Dr. Ali Java. I am an executive member of South Asian Federation of Endocrine Societies. Today I'm going to talk about the patient-centric approach that is vogue these days. The best approach and the guidance that you can get for this methodology is the consensus ADA and EAST joint guidelines. It emphasized that the doctors should approach treatment of type 2 diabetes from a patient standpoint of view. What does the patient need? What will help the patient? What could potentially harm the patient? So I'm just not going to go in the whole details. I'm just going to discuss the key recommendations. The key recommendations are, first of all, lifestyle modification, as well as self-diabetes management and shared decision making. These are the cornerstones of treatment of type 2 diabetes. Patients should be made partner in their own healthcare. They need to know how to manage their diabetes, how to prevent complications, and how to carry themselves in their activities of daily life. These are the non-pharmacological recommendations. However, if the patient now needs a pharmacological treatment, the first line treatment still remains metformin, a time-tested drug which has a safety profile that has been proven over decades. Okay, now metformin alone is not enough. What next? Think like a patient. Think what the patient would benefit from. Think what the patient's comorbidities are. If the patient's comorbidity includes atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease, you would choose a pharmacological therapy that is safe for heart. In that case, the consensus guidelines recommend that using GLP-1 receptor agonists or SGLT-2 inhibitors is safe, provided they have a proven safety record in heart disease. Okay, there is no atherosclerotic heart disease. What if the patient has chronic kidney disease or has heart failure? In that case, the choice of drugs include SGLT2 receptor inhibitors because they are safe in this situation. And also thiazolidine diones. Okay, there is no chronic heart disease. There is no chronic kidney disease. What are the other considerations? So three things come to the mind. You want to either make sure that the patient does not get hypoglycemic or patient does not gain excessive weight or the patient is able to afford it. So keep these things in mind when you are deciding what drugs should be for the patient. If the consideration is there should be no weight gain, then you should think of drugs that are weight neutral or help you lose weight. The GLP-1 receptor agonists are the first choice as well as SGLT2 inhibitors. If preventing or avoiding hypoglycemia is a consideration, then DPP-4 inhibitors as well as SGLT2 inhibitors, thiazolidine diones are consideration and injections you can consider GLP-1 receptor agonists. If cost is an issue, which we see in third world countries where many of the people pay out of their own pocket or the government does not have the required finances to take care of their medication expense. In that case, sulfonyl ureas or thiazolidine diones are a good choice provided that there are no other contraindications. Okay, now oral hypoglycemias are not working or they are in the disease state has advanced to a certain stage, now you need to move to an injection. First injectable of choice is GLP-1 receptor agonists. They are preferred over insulin. 
and afterwards you need to look at the other aspects of the general health of the patient. So in summary, patient-centric approach is the right approach. We should keep it on our forefront of our minds so that we can make a good decision in the interest of the patient. Thank you.